Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name's Wyatt and today I'll be teaching you how to script a server lock system on Roblox. Okay, so before I show you how to make this script, I just want to show you how it works. So all we have to do is go into the game and what we can do is we can run the slock command and it'll lock the server for whatever ranks we want and lower. Um, and then we can unlock the server by typing unslock. Okay, so now that you know what the script does, I actually want to show you how to make it. So the first thing we're going to do before we even get into scripting this, we have to create our server lock GUI. I mean, all this is is a little notification that comes down from the top whenever the server is locked or unlocked. I mean, in this case, all we have right here is a screen GUI and a text label underneath of it. You could create it like I have it, or you could use the model in the description. But all we want to do is set this up so that the players know if the server is locked or if it's unlocked. After this, what we want to do is just set this GUI, the visible property of it, to false. I mean, we'll get back to that a little bit later, but we just want to set it to false until we actually lock or unlock the server. After this, what I'm going to do is create a new script under server script service. Um, and I'm just going to name this script server lock system, but you can name it whatever you'd like. The first line that we want to put inside of the script is we want to create a variable for our group ID. So whatever group ID we want the system to use for all of its ranks, we want to put it in here. So we'll say local group ID equals, um, and in this case I have my group ID for the row script or group, but you just want to put yours in here. Um, the second variable I'd like to set up is the minimum rank to use commands. So all this means is whatever the minimum rank is, whatever rank the players have to be at or above to use our slock and on slot commands, we want to put that here. I mean, usually you're going to want to have some kind of admin rank be able to use this, but in my case, my rank ID is 254, so I'm going to put that in. So minimum rank to use commands equals 254. Uh, the next variable I want to set up is the minimum rank to join slocked. Um, and I know this variable might be a little bit confusing, but all it means is the minimum rank for players to be able to bypass it. So even if the server is locked, these ranks, anybody of this rank or above can still join the server. So we'll say local minimum rank to join slocked equals... Um, in this case, I want ranks 10 and above to be able to join even when the server is locked, but you just want to set this up for whatever your rank is. Um, and the final variable I like to set up is the server lock message, and all this means is the message that will be displayed to users whenever they're kicked from the game because the server's locked. So we'll say local server lock message equals, and then in this case, I want my message to say this server is locked, please join again later. But you could set this to whatever you'd like. After this, what I want to do is I want to get whenever a player joins the game. Um, and the way we do this in Roblox is by hooking into the player added event of game.players. So all we'll do is say game.players.player added, and we'll connect it up to a function. Um, and inside of this function, what I want to do is I want to get the player. So whenever a player is added, whenever a player joins the game, we get exactly who that player is. Um, and then after this, inside of here, what I want to do is I want to get whenever that player chats, whenever they send a message in chat, um, just so that we can check to see if they ran that slock or unslock command. Um, and the way we do this is by hooking into the chatted event of player. So we'll say player.chatted, and we'll connect that up to a function. Um, and inside of here, just like we did above, what I want to do is I want to get their message. So whenever they send a message in chat, we get what the contents of that message is, whatever they sent. Um, and in here, what I want to do before we even get into checking what the message is to see if they're trying to run the slot command or the unslot command, what we have to do is we have to check their rank in the group. We have to make sure that they're, you know, they have the valid permission that they're above the certain rank in the group that we want them to be. Um, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to say if player, and we're going to call the get rank in group method of player. So this allows us to get whatever the rank is in a certain group. Um, and in here, what we have to do, our only parameter is the group ID. So we say whatever group we want to grab their rank in. If that rank in the group is greater than or equal to, and then right here, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in our minimum rank to use commands, and we have our variable for that. Then, so if they have permissions, if they're an administrator, if they're actually supposed to be running the commands, then what we want to do is check to see what the command is that they're actually trying to run, what their message says. Um, the way we do this, it's super easy. We're just going to set up an if statement. So we'll say if message is equal to, and then we want to say whatever we want the message to be equal to. Um, I want to say if the message is equal to our slot command or our server lock command. So in this case, I want it to be exclamation point slot, but your message could be whatever you want. 
then what we want to do is select the server. So we'll say select server. And then otherwise, if the message is equal to unslock or our unslock command, then we want to unlock the server. Okay, so now if we look at our code and what we have so far, all we're doing is checking to see if they run the slot command or if they run the unslot command, and then we're just saying we want to lock or unlock the server. We're not actually doing anything. Um, so what I want to do is create a variable um, that controls whether the server is locked or not. Um, then we're going to go from there and set it inside of here, and then we'll use that variable to check to see whether we should kick the player from the game if it's locked or if we should let them join if it's unlocked. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a few lines after line 5, and I'm going to create a variable called server locked. Just say local server locked, and I want to set that to false to start because I don't want the server to be locked when we start. Um, and then over here inside on line 12, inside of this if statement, I want to say if we run the slot command, then I want to set that variable equal to true, so we lock the server. And then on line 15, wherever we say unslock when we run that command, I want to set that variable to false, so we unlock the server. After this, what I want to do is I want to begin work on the mechanism that's going to kick them from the game if the server is locked and they're not an administrator. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to create a few new lines after line 19. Um, and over here, what I want to do is I want to check to see if the server is currently locked. If it is locked, then we want to get the player's rank in the group. And we want to say if they're not able to bypass the locked server, if they're not able to still join or they're not supposed to still join, then we want to kick them from the game. We want to remove them from the game. Um, so all we're going to do, we're going to say if server locked is equal to true. So if the server is currently locked, then I want to get the player's rank in the group. So if player and we're going to call the get rank in group method of player and in here I'm going to pass in the group ID so if the rank in our group is less than our minimum rank to join slot variable so if they're less than rank 10 in this case what I want to do is I want to kick them from the game um, and the way we're going to kick them from the game is by calling the kick method of player so we'll say player and then we'll call the kick method um, and inside of here we have an optional argument that I like to pass in um, and all this is going to do is it's going to give the player a reason for their kick. It's going to display a reason so that you know they know why they were removed from the game. Um, and in this case, we have our variable, our server lock message variable. So I'm just going to pass that in. But you could say whatever you want here. Um, but I just like this kind of generic message right here to tell the user that the server's locked. So at this point in the script, we actually already have a fully working slot system. The server can lock, it can unlock, players can bypass it if they're above a certain rank. The system's pretty good so far, but as you'll see, if we go into the game and we run the command, we have no way of knowing that the command worked. We have no way of actually seeing that it locked the server. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the GUI we created earlier, our server lock message GUI. Um, we're going to use that in order to notify all the players that the server is currently locked. Um, and the way we're going to do this is by looping through all of the players. We're going to set the visibility property of this text label to true, just like this, if we were to do it like this. And then we're going to set the message up here to either locked or unlocked. Um, so all we're going to do, I'm going to create a new line after where we set server locked to true. Uh, and the first thing we need to do is get all of the players in our game in an array. So I'll say local players equals game.players. And I'm going to call the get players method of game.players, and this will return every player that's currently in the game. Uh, now what I want to do after we have the players, I want to loop through all those players. So I want to say do some code for every single player that's currently in the game. So all we're going to do is say 4i equals 1, so our index equals 1, for each of our players, so number of players, do. So for each of our players, we want to run this code. Um, and in here, what I want to do is I want to get the current player that we're looping through. Because we're looping through them all, I need to get that exact player that we're currently on. So I'll create a variable. I'll say local current player equals. And then to do this, we'll just say players and then our index right there. So that'll get the current player that we're looping through so that we can do our manipulation with the GUI. After this, what I want to do, I want to create another variable. Um, and this is just going to get a reference. It'll be easy for us later on. We'll just get a reference to this little server lock message right here underneath the player. So we'll say local server lock message equals. And then I just want to set this equal to player dot player GUI dot server lock GUI like we have over here because it gets cloned into their player GUI dot server lock message. And that'll give us an easy reference to that text label so that we can do a bunch of different things with it. 
After this, what I want to do is I want to set the visibility property of this text label to true so that the players can see it. So we'll say server lock message dot visible equals true. Uh, and I also want to set the text of this message because the text is going to be different when we lock and unlock the server. So we're just going to say server lock message dot text equals. Um, and in this case, what I want to do is I want to set the text to maybe something like server is locked for ranks. 10 and below because 10 is our minimum rank to join slot. So all I'll say is server is locked for, and then I want to concatenate, I want to add onto the string. I want to add on our minimum rank to join slot like this. So ranks 10 in this case and below. Just to tell our users what ranks are still able to join even though the server is locked. Um, and then after this, the GUI would come up and it'd be really nice um, you know, to notify our users but we don't want the GUI to be there forever. I want to get rid of it after maybe like five seconds. I want it to go away. And the way we're going to get rid of it is by saying wait and then however long we want to wait before it goes away. Um, and in this case, I'm going to wait five seconds. And then all we want to do is to make it go away, set the visibility property of our message to false. Um, and we can just go into the game once again to test this out. And as you'll see, what we'll be able to do, we can run our command in chat. And rather than getting no notification, See, it'll say server's locked for 10 and below. We wait a second and then it'll go away. Now that we have this message set up for our lock command, we want to do the same thing, but for our unlock command. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to copy from line 15 for where it says local players down to right here at our end of the for loop. And then I'm just going to paste it right after line 28 where we say server locked is equal to false. Um, and in here, we're going to do the same exact thing, but rather than setting the message check to server is locked, all I'm going to do is say server is unlocked. Um, and that's actually all we have to do for the script. We can go into the game real quick to test it out. Uh, and all we'll have to do is we type in chat, we're going to run our slot command like this. And because we're above that rank in the group, we'll be able to slot the server and the message will come up. Uh, and the message will go away after five seconds. And then we can unlock the server by saying unslock. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. As always, I'll have the pastement link with the code and the Roblox model link with all the assets shown in this video in the description. And I'll see you guys later.